See these guys? And you know what? If I'm here, you know you're safe. Got to be safe. Good boy. Good. Now, an important point when you have a horse that's a little bit um, insecure or thinking self-preservation is that, um, you guys, have you ever heard of the dominant eye? Anybody do any shooting or whatever? Okay, so pick a point in the distance, everybody, and point with your finger at, like, let's say one of the, like the gate or the fence post or something, the chair. And then close one eye, and then open your two eyes, and close the other eye. When you close one of your eyes, I don't know which one it is for you, your finger will jump to the side. Did you all see that? So if you're looking at something, like right now I've closed my right eye, and my finger stays uh, still, which means that my left eye is my dominant eye. And although I'm right-handed, Rhett can tell you from the very little bit of shooting I've done, I'm left eye dominant and I shoot from my left eye. Horses have a, um, a dominant eye as well. And when the dominant eye is on the inside, they tend to shy more from objects that they saw in the other direction that didn't bother them at all. And that's because they're trying to whip their heads around and see with the dominant eye if there's danger there. So that was very good what you did, Linda, but now I want you to do the same thing with all the people from the other direction. So turn around and come this way so that he sees everything from his left eye. So when you guys go to a horse show or clinic or something like that and you walk your horses around a strange arena, make sure that you do it in both directions so that the horse gets to see everything yeah, and if he's nervous, let him stop and look at the people. Good. Okay, so he seems pretty relaxed about that, but that's just a uh, something for you to think about. You think, God, I've been by that flower pot six times in this direction. How I've changed direction? Why is my horse spooking? Well, they're looking. They're trying to look at it with their dominant eye. So when you're ready, show me some trot work. Squeaky saddle. Yes, it is. I have not been able to fix it. So, a la the training scale, this is good rhythm and this is good tempo. On the correct diagonal. Good. Okay, so walk for a second. Just keep walking. Just look at your walk for a sec. Good, so you have very nice elastic elbows in the walk, meaning look at me. Elasticity begins with an E, elbows begins with an E. You're letting your arm be an extension of the rein and you're following the natural motion of his head and neck forward and back with your elastic elbow. So you're not blocking him and jamming him up in front. This is very nice. This is like row, row, row your motor. Sometimes what I tell people is to imagine that the reins are like two solid sticks and every stride you're pushing the horse's nose out, 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 out. Let me see you do that even more now. You have nice elastic elbows, but I want to see a little bit more. You have to be faster with your elbows because you're not, not in the rhythm. There! You weren't quite in the rhythm of his walk. Now you are. And his walk can get bigger. A lot of times we think the horse isn't going, and so we start kick, kick, kicking them. But we don't know that we're, we're limiting how much they can actually walk. So look at me. Almost, home position is almost a right angle, but with your elbow a little bit forward of your waist, almost go to a straight arm, and then come back to home position. It's good. So exaggerate that even more for me. Hands forward, forward. That a girl. Forward, forward. And the hands the same height. Lower your outer hand a little bit. Beautiful. 
Beautiful. And one hand the mirror image of the other. Row, row. Now just for argument's sake, keep rowing with your elbows, but decrease the amount that you're rowing by about 50% and watch what happens. See how he slowed right down and the stride got shorter? Now increase your arms, don't use your legs, just increase the rowing of your arms. Row, row. Feel how his stride got longer? So a lot of times we think, oh my horse isn't going or his neck is too short or whatever. And so we start kicking and tapping and you have to be sure that the contact you're offering the horse allows him to use his body and that you don't basically have the emergency brake on. So you had good following elbows in the walk, but you just need to do more of what you were doing so that he can do the big walk that he has. So the elbows at home position, just a little bit in front of your waist, straightened almost completely to a straight arm, and then back to home position. So that's much better for the walk. Now let's talk about the trot. I'm going to wait until you're up here, and then I want you to turn in toward me so you can see yourself on the videotape. Okay, so elasticity of contact. Contact, I don't know if you were here at the beginning of the day, I talked about the training scale. The third ingredient in the training scale is contact and connection. And part of a good quality contact is that it is firm. That training our first level, we want to have at least a pound in the hand so you feel the hind legs in the hand as we go up through collection the weight of the rein gets lighter and lighter because they take more weight behind and pretty soon you just have the weight of the rein which is a couple ounces. But firm, consistent as opposed to nit, 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 which jerks the horse in the mouth. Elastic, which refers to your elbows which we've now fixed in the walk. Symmetrical, which we also fixed, you had your right hand higher, sometimes put your thumb over the bite okay. and bridge the reins and train yourself to do little serpentines and circles like that and then you, if you know, if you have a very, like an inch or two, you know you're not raising that hand. Okay. Okay, um, and so now we have better contact in the walk. In rise and trot, you didn't have elastic elbows. You know that, okay. So the thing is, because, because and the, the action of the elbows in the trot, rise and trot is different than in the walk and in the canter. Walk and canter is what we just did. Yeah. Elastic elbows allows for movement. So in walk and canter, his head and neck is going forward and back. So that's why your elbows open that way. In trot, the horse's neck is steady. But in posting trot, you move. You go up and down. So you have to open your elbows differently in posting trot than you do in a walk and in the canter. And because you locked your elbows, you'll, you would be able to see on the tape that as you go up, your hands go up. As you go down, your hands go down. And what you're doing is you're changing the bearing of the rein in his mouth all the time. Yeah, you nothing like that. So what you need to learn to do, I'll give you a couple different images, but you need to learn how to open your elbows in a different way. No, no, yeah, exactly. So rest your baby fingers down here for a second. And in the halt, I want you to stand up in your irons and continue to feel your baby fingers good and sit. So we're doing posting halt now. And focus on your elbows. Open, close. Open, close. Open, close. It's opening like a hinge like that. So if you were in posting trot, you might think as you go up, I'm going to push his mane down into his neck, down into his neck, down into his neck. Or you can think about an old-fashioned washboard where you're going to wash the clothes. So as you go up, you push, you wash the clothes, wash the clothes, wash the clothes. And it looks like I'm making a lot of movement and my hands are really going wild. But to the degree that I'm going up, my hands are going down and they end up staying steady. Yeah. So let's just try that in rising trot. Move your circles so that it's in the center of the arena. Yeah, yeah, loving that. Keep the thumb at the highest point in the hand, a little bit slower from your tummy muscles. Slow. Yep, good. Well done, you. Rest your hands on the withers and think of, as I go up, I'm going to push the mane down, down, down. There you go. Push the mane down, down. Wash the, oh, they went up that time. Push the mane down, down. There you go. There you go. Push them down. Oh, I see daylight under your hands. Push the mane into the neck, into the neck, into the neck. There, there. Now, come to the walk and immediately row, row, row your boat. 
row, row. With the big row we had, you're not in time with him. Quicker with your arms, back and forth. Open, 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 beautiful. Open, 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 open. Rest your hands on the withers. Slow rising trot. Press your knuckles down into his neck on the first step of trot. First step, trot. And push the mane down into the neck. Down, 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 down. Wash the clothes. Stay on a circle, he'll slow down. Down, 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 down. Down, beautiful, down. Go back to the walk and immediately find the timing of the row, 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 row. Come on, open those elbows. Open, don't push with your seat. Open, 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 open. So that time it took you about six strides before you got into it. You have a question on your lips? Yeah, um, because he's, he's doing what he's doing today, so I, I lengthened the reins for the trot. Yeah. And then when I came to the walk, they were flopping, so that was why I, I gathered them again. Yeah, but you could still gather them and keep your arms moving. But the point that, and I don't expect you to get this today, but the point that I'm making is, first of all, you need to learn the motion of the ocean, the motion of your elbows in each of the three gates. That's beautiful. And in the walk, you had good motion, but you didn't have enough, and sometimes it wasn't fast enough when I made you do bigger. This is perfect. In the trot, your elbows were locked, so your hands were going up and down. So first, individually in the three gates, practice the correct motion of your elbows. Then, what I did this, the reason I did this last thing here is a lot of times people have their horses nicely on the bit when they're in the traveling gates and then they go to do a transition and the horse comes off the bit. But nine times out of ten the reason is you weren't quick enough to change from one kind of elastic elbow to the other. And that's why I had you do some transitions. I want to know that if you're in walk and you ask for a rising trot on the very first step you do that. And so, I can't remember which transition it was, but there was one transition, you had two strides before you got your elbows moving, and the last one to the walk, it took you five or six strides. But if those elbows lock up, if they freeze up around a transition, your horse hits your hands, comes above the bit. Or another type of horse, an Arabian, hit the hand, duck behind the bit. You know, but they're gonna duck behind or come against something that doesn't feel elastic to them. So, so far, all I want you to do is, as far as contact is concerned, is to think about in the traveling gates having your elbows moving the correct way with your hands side by side, not having the outer hand higher than the inner hand. And then once that becomes comfortable and easy and you're doing it with muscle memory, then work on the transitions from gate to gate and realize that you're not locking up right around the transition. You can easily go from one form of elastic elbow to the other to the other. Okay?